Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today's video is an update on my Blue Death Fanning Beetle breeding project. In May of 2019, I posted the first video in this playlist, and in July of 2020, I released a video showing the first Blue Death Fanning Beetle to have developed from egg all the way to adult in my care. If you haven't checked out the rest of the playlist yet, feel free to do that after you watch this video. And now for the update. In the past, any pupation that had occurred in my project had been underneath the substrate. A week or two ago, I checked the incubator and found a larva that had been beneath the substrate, but it was now at the surface, immobile and slightly curled. A day or two after that, I saw that the larva had pupated right on the surface. This is exciting for a couple of reasons. One, it allows for better visualization and documentation of the pupation process. Two, it may mean that there are simpler and more efficient methods of encouraging successful pupation in a captive setting. I'm investigating that now, and rest assured, if my investigations reveal anything that may help further the captive breeding efforts of this species, I'll be posting a video about that. I posted the photo of this pupa on Instagram, and Ethan from Insect Forge sent me a message with an excellent tip for success that I'd like to share with you. Before I do that, I'd like to thank my patrons at Patreon. They do so much for this channel, and I try to give back when I can. One of the ways that I do that is with sneak peeks of news like this before I post it on any other social media. Of course, the main reason that I would encourage you to become a patron is that you enjoy the content that I produce and you want me to continue to produce and improve it. If you'd like to help for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link at the end of the video. So now back to this tip for pupation that I received from Ethan at Insect Forge. Though I am among the first, I'm not the first to produce captive bred blue death fanning beetles. A few other people did so before me and one of the issues that seemed to arise with some of those beetles was an issue with elytra, the, the wing covers. Now, Ethan has been breeding a related darkling beetle species, Eliotis armata, and has discovered that uh, surface pupation can cause dented elytra. Apparently, the beetles can have difficulty riding themselves when they're pupating on the surface, and this can cause some wear and tear on the relatively soft uh, wing covers of a newly enclosed adult beetle. And Ethan has found that a piece of cork bark situated near the pupa can allow the beetle to ride itself soon enough to prevent the deformation of the elytra with his beetles. And it seemed that a similar precaution could help with the developing uh, blue death fanning beetles. So as you can see here, I've strategically placed some small pieces of cork bark around the pupa. Thank you, Ethan, for passing on what you've learned to help me. Sharing knowledge is one of the greatest things about this hobby. And if you'd like to see more about Ethan's beetle breeding projects, check out Insect Forge on Instagram. Have you ever tried breeding blue death fanning beetles? If so, please share your experience in the comments. And stay tuned for more updates on my blue death fanning beetle breeding project. And thanks for watching. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell so you don't miss my next video.